your skin, Big Bandish. Hello Banish Soldiers, my name is Daisy Jing. I am the founder and CEO of Banish. And today I am eight months pregnant. I have no idea where the time has gone. And I wanted to talk a little bit about skincare during pregnancy. So first I'm gonna talk about skin changes you may experience and what I have experienced. Secondly, I will be talking about the ingredients that you need to be avoiding during pregnancy. And third, I'm going to give you guys some alternatives you can use while you're pregnant. So first and foremost, my skin has undergone so many changes during pregnancy. The biggest one has been dryness. It is so dry. I've never really had dry skin before. You guys know I've suffered with acne, cystic acne all my life. So my skin has always been very oily, but somehow now it has been super dry. I get dry patches here on the forehead as well as like on my cheekbones. I also have eczema and psoriasis and just dry and itchy skin in general. You guys know I've been suffering with psoriasis for the last two and a half years and it's just gotten like 10 times worse because of the dryness, the changes in your hormones making you itchy everywhere. And then third, I've been getting a lot of melasma, which I've never had before. My face just feels like, it looks like it's just red all the time. It looks like I'm sunburned. It just looks red. My cheeks are constantly red. Um, and I've also been noticing a lot of discoloration around my body. I have the linea nigra <laughs> running down my belly, but I've also noticed my armpits are just darker. Things are just darker. Things are just more pigmented. And lastly, I have not noticed any cystic acne but I have noticed a tiny little bumps and pustules underneath my skin, which I've never had before. I usually used to have big cystic acne and now it's just like tiny bumps everywhere. So this is all completely normal during pregnancy because of the crazy amount of work our body is doing and the crazy amount of hormone changes that are going on. Of course, our skin is going to react to that. So what do we do when we notice these skin changes? It actually can be quite difficult to figure out how to treat them because there are a ton of ingredients that you should be avoiding during pregnancy. Okay, number two, what ingredients should you be avoiding during pregnancy? I want to stipulate one thing is that there has been not enough research done. So basically what researchers have done is do these skincare ingredients have a systemic effect to the entire body, which has a probability of maybe infecting the fetus. And again, there's different kind of risk tolerances for people. Some women will still drink coffee. Some women will still maybe drink a glass of wine here and there. Um, and other you know, parents are very, very conservative. They will avoid everything like even deli meat and sushi and all that. So you have to understand that a lot of this has not been clinically proven, but by trying to figure out if these ingredients have an overall effect to our body, then we can deduct if it might have an effect to the fetus. But we're gonna be super, super cautious and I'm gonna be telling you the ingredients you should be avoiding during pregnancy. First ingredient to avoid is vitamin A. Vitamin A. Whatsoever, do not use any forms of vitamin A in your skincare routine. Now, for sure, for sure, for sure, Accutane will definitely cause issues during pregnancy. It has been directly linked to birth defects, which is why they say when you're on Accutane, you need two forms of birth control and you need to sign off that you're not gonna get pregnant and yada 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 so definitely avoid Accutane but you should also avoid other forms of vitamin A that also includes you know retinol, retinoids, retinoic acid as well as things like Tazerac and um, Napoline gels. The next ingredient you should definitely avoid is hydroquinone. Hydroquinone is used for a lot of bleaching creams, a lot of creams and skincare products that help prevent hyperpigmentation. So hydroquinone is a no-go. I do believe there was a clinical study saying that it might have effect on the unborn baby so no go to the hydroquinone and again even if you're planning to have a family Aww. in the near future you might want to just start weeding out these skincare products even before you become pregnant now these following ingredients have not been clinically proven to cause harm to an unborn baby but we can be as conservative as possible and really try to stay away from this and again don't freak out if for example one time you use benzoyl peroxide or salicylic acid uh, or you use a product with fragrance in it it's it's really about the 
concentration and how much you're putting on your skin and in your body. So again, there's no, <laughs> there's no need to like freak out if you use these products here and there, but just stop using them as soon as you watch this video, okay? So benzoyl peroxide is used for a lot of big cystic acne, preventing pimples. You know, it can go in the bloodstream, it can go in your body. So we just want to avoid all forms of benzoyl peroxide. Now salicylic acid is something that people are debating whether it is safe to use during pregnancy. Salicylic acid is actually a form of aspirin and aspirin is something you need to be avoiding like the aspirin pills. Salicylic acid is, you know, used to prevent pimples and um, blackheads and stuff like that. Okay, and then some other ingredients you wanna avoid. Now, what is interesting is a lot of clean beauty avoids these, these ingredients regularly and a lot of natural skincare ingredients and skincare products actually don't have these ingredients in their skincare, including Vanish. So, fragrance is something you wanna avoid during pregnancy, artificial colors, all of that. In your skincare, you really don't want to put anything in your body that you don't absolutely need. You wanna be like as pure and natural as possible. Uh, so you wanna avoid fragrance. You wanna avoid parabens because parabens can be an endocrine disruptor as well as phthalates. And you also wanna avoid formaldehyde. So you're like, formaldehyde, that's random. Well, formaldehyde can be found in a lot of nail polishes, a lot of like nail art stuff, and hair dyes, hair coloring, hair straightening. So it's best if you wanna be cautious to really avoid getting those treatments done. I know for me, I have not colored my hair in over a year. I don't go to the nail salon. If I do, I make sure like to make sure it's well ventilated and I don't do any of those like acrylics that I used to do. And then you also want to avoid BPA. Now this is a funny fact. Did you know the sperm mobility has actually decreased in the last decade or so? Um, so actually altogether sperm has been swimming a lot slower than they have been before. And that's why some people think there's more of an increase of infertility nowadays. I know it's like a long tangent, but what could be the cause for that? Actually people think a lot of the plastics and food and water and skincare in the products that we use has been causing a lot of endocrine and hormone disruptors, which has been slowing down, you know, the health of our reproductive systems. So I thought that was super interesting and that's why a lot of people don't like using plastics or don't like having BPA um, in their environment. And so great thing is, is that all Banish products are in glass jars. So over time, if you do have like, for example, your skincare in plastic that has BPA or let's say your food that is stored in BPA containers, over time, those can seep into your food and into your skin care, you're putting them in your body. And just over time, again, it's not usually a one-time thing, it can really disrupt your hormones and therefore affect uh, fertility. So that's just one thing to know if you're trying to conceive. All right, so you're like, Daisy, you told me everything I couldn't use, which is basically everything I have in my skincare routine. And I also have a lot of skin issues during pregnancy. So what should I be using? So I wanna tell you this, when I started formulating Vanish products seven plus years ago, pregnancy was the last thing on my mind. Family planning was the last thing on my mind. And what I realized when you know formulating Vanish products is a lot of products cause a lot of issues. The pregnancy not safe ingredients are not in our Vanish products because Back then when I was struggling with acne, ingredients like hydroquinone, vitamin A, benzoyl peroxide was way too harsh for my skin. And that actually caused me to break out. And so because those have a chance of having more of a systemic impact on your whole body, my skin was like reacting to it by breaking out. So I just find it incredible how when formulating banished products, I just made everything pregnancy safe, even though I had no idea that it was pregnancy safe. Isn't that cool? So again, make sure to ask your doctor before using or, you know, try out any new skincare products or whatnot, but the ingredients that I listed above that you're not supposed to avoid during pregnancy are not in Banish's skincare, and my doctor has given me the A-OK -okay to continue using these products. All right, so for acne, for pregnancy acne, for the little bumps on your skin, what can you use, right? We just said you can't use many of the products you commonly use to treat acne, so you can use forms of different um, lactic acids like lactic acid, azaleic acid, and glycolic acid. Now, what do these ingredients do? Well, for example, glycolic acid is a very, very small molecule. So it'll actually go into the little pores in your skin and like do a deep vacuum through the dirt and the bacteria and the oil. And that will help prevent uh, the cystic-like pimples and the acne during pregnancy. What's amazing is um, in our pumpkin enzyme mask, it has naturally 
occurring glycolic acid, but many of our banished soldiers use it even if they're not pregnant because they have found that this has helped them with their acne more than other products. I love using this even <laughs> as a spot treatment. I've used it for over seven years now, even though I wasn't pregnant during then. Um, it's just been really, really great to help prevent the pimples before they start. And it also acts as a really great exfoliant to your skin. So right now, I said I mentioned I have the little bumps on my skin. Um, this really helps kind of exfoliate the skin out so it prevents forming those like, you know those like tiny bumps that are under your skin but they're not quite big pimples yet. So this has been really great and it's natural and it doesn't contain any of those ingredients that you should be avoiding during pregnancy. All right, so what are you supposed to be doing about hyperpigmentation during pregnancy? Um, for me, my skin has just been blotchy and it has gotten darker in areas I don't want it to be dark. Um, I feel like my skin is like stained with darkness a lot of times. And again, we can't use hydroquinone, which is usually the go-to ingredient for lightening the skin. The great thing you can do is you can still microneedle while pregnant. Yes, you still can. Now, again, ask your doctor before trying anything different or new, uh, but microneedling is all natural. You're just using your skin to replenish collagen. And also make sure if you're going to use a product on top, use a Banish product like the Banish oil or use something natural. You definitely, definitely, definitely do not want to put anything on on top of microneedling because your skin is going to absorb it in your body. So make sure you ask your doctor uh, whatever product you're using on top of microneedling. But you can also do dry microneedling using the banisher at home, which is totally safe because you're not putting any ingredients in your skin. Make sure you avoid um, numbing cream too. Don't use any kind of numbing cream before uh, microneedling while pregnant. And also I would advise you to avoid the belly area and not microneedle uh, on your belly while pregnant. You just don't want to cause any further irritation or you know, get things directly directly to the baby <laughs> during that time, but I'm definitely going to be microneedling after pregnancy um, to get rid of those like lines and stretch marks and all of that. What do you do when you have dry skin during pregnancy? Dry skin is a huge, huge issue for me. My skin is constantly dry, so I love using aloe vera. Aloe vera is such a great ingredient. And what I love in so many of Banish's products is we have aloe vera as the main ingredient in so many of our products. Organic aloe vera leaf juice is what it is, or in the fighter gel, it's the aloe vera leaf gel. So these, these products are really, really great in terms of moisturizing the skin. Aloe vera is so, so good for hydrating and moisturizing the skin. It does also have a little bit of antiseptic properties so it'll actually help prevent acne so it's a great alternative to using more of the stronger acne fighting ingredients now if you do have dry skin I highly recommend using the banish oil this is totally safe for pregnancy it has um, glycerin and it has l acid vitamin C um, or you can use some of the vitamin C cream or what I like to do is I like to mix my own little concoction of aloe vera and vitamin C I mix the three of these and I actually apply it on my belly and also on my skin and it has really helped reduce the dryness and also vitamin C is really great for preventing hyperpigmentation what vitamin C does is it kind of helps your collagen kind of move faster in your skin and it brightens the skin so it will help reduce the like darkness and the melasma uh, that you have during pregnancy All right, so if you also want to avoid dry skin during pregnancy, you wanna make sure that your cleansers aren't extra drying. Um, so a lot of cleansers have an ingredient called sodium lauryl sulfate, and that actually strips more of the oils in your skin. It's found in a lot of washing and um, laundry detergents. That's really, really harsh. You don't wanna be doing that to your face all the time. So I actually use the Banish All Clear Mint Cleanser. This is so amazing, you guys, not only for the skin. I love how it gently cleanses the skin without over drying it. Um, it definitely doesn't make your face feel like plastic. Um, you definitely don't feel like you need 
need to put a ton of moisturizer on top after using this. But also what I love about this is that I have, have, had, still currently have extreme morning sickness. Like I was very, very sick throughout my pregnancy, uh, just completely nauseous and my sinuses were just like on fire. Like I would wake up and I couldn't breathe through my nose. And I always felt like I got hit by a truck in the morning. Like the mornings were so, so bad for me to get up, get out of bed and all of that. And so I've had to find ways to kind of energize myself because I do run a business and I still gotta, still got to keep moving. So what I've actually been doing is in the morning, I will wash my face with the All Clear Mint Cleanser with cold water first thing in the morning. And it instantly wakes me up. It makes me feel less nauseous. It actually makes my sinuses feel a lot better. Um, and it kind of just makes me feel like less dizzy and nauseous and all of that because it does have a really ginger, tingly, uh, minty smell to it, which really helps with waking you up. Um, I also got a lot of migraines during pregnancy too. And this, I would actually help kind of control the migraines and the headaches because peppermint, peppermint oil does help with, you know, migraines. Um, and again, <laughs> during pregnancy, you can't be taking your Excedrin all day, every day, so. So I really felt like my skin was getting really congested. I felt like for me working out, especially in a sweaty environment was kind of a skincare routine that really helped my face feel flushed and full and gave me that glow. And I really miss that because now I just feel like I'm just constantly congested and not moving and not getting the exercise that I once did. So what I have been doing is I've been using the Banish Stick, um, which I have been actually just working out my face. And this is completely natural. Uh, I use a little bit of this with some banished oil and just kind of, you know, push my skin, give it that kind of skin workout because afterwards my skin will be red from using this. And this, what this does is it actually kind of helps like demineralize and declog all of the stuff on your face. So if you think about, you get a clogged pipe in your house, um, you really have to clear out those pipes. Otherwise the water can't, you know, drain properly and you have plumbing issues. So this kind of helps with the plumbing in your face. Um, and it also really helps with nasal congestion. I have really bad nasal congestion in general. It's 10 times worse during pregnancy. And after using the All Clear Mint Cleanser, I'll take some banished oil in this and just really unclog all of the nasal stuff. And it helps drain, helps drain the nasal passages. So I hoped you guys learned something about skincare for, 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 during, after, during a pregnancy. Uh, it's kind of crazy to see there's so many things in our environment, so many toxins uh, in the food that we eat and in the skincare that we use that really can affect your body and also your baby. So even if you're not, you know, gonna get pregnant tomorrow, it might be good to start incorporating these natural remedies and incorporating, you know, new ways of living just to be healthier in general. And that way, when you are ready to have a child, your body is in the best condition that it can be for creating a good environment for your baby. Thank you all so much for watching. Congratulations to all the new moms out there. And don't forget, don't pick your skin, pick Banish. Bye. Hey soldiers, it's Daisy, founder of Banish. Did you like this video? Please give it a thumbs up and comment and subscribe to our channel to be featured with any future Banish Acne Diaries and Skin Positivity comment. Thank you and don't forget, Banish, we got your back. Bye.